All right, hey everybody, this is Tim Ferriss. I'm gonna explain a little bit about my process videos that I've captured from Procreate. I'm getting back into artwork, into illustration, I suppose, or predominantly what I've done in the past is pencil and ink. And I did that in high school and college and I've taken a huge long hiatus because I was time to get serious and grow up and do the job thing and career and blah, blah, blah. But now I'm really getting back into exploring the, the visual side of my human experience and getting back into drawing. And I've been doing that by alternating back and forth between analog, so using say, newsprint and charcoal for live drawing classes or any number of other tools, but mostly monochromatic or black and white kind of stuff. Sometimes I'll use highlights with pastels or something. There's that piece. And then using Procreate or really any other digital tool, I imagine, but Photoshop is so intimidating to me. I, I would never even consider trying to learn it because I know it's such a power tool for really sophisticated users. So that scared me off. Then I noticed a number of people on Instagram using Procreate and decided to give it a shot because it's very portable, relatively straightforward compared to Photoshop as I understand it. And I captured a bunch of these process videos because I want to share my, my learning process. And I'll explain more about how I've sequenced things and chosen people to follow and so on. But suffice to say, I'll try to give a brief summary of what you will see in this compilation of process. And this might not be in the perfect order. I didn't realize when I was renaming these because I'm an idiot that they would get reordered. So uh, we shall see. Uh, looks like I might be able to figure out the, the exact process with the time. Anyway, Bacchus was number one. This was with Procreate. And I wanted to learn the tools before getting ambitious with the art. And for that reason, you'll notice in some cases, I've done two or three tutorials that are very similar in a row because I want to get comfortable with certain types of process, certain use of the tools. Creating perfect circles for a moon, for instance, adding texture with something like spackle it as a brush, so on and so forth. Bacchus, I was really just getting the basics, right? How do I choose a brush? How do I change thickness? How do I change opacity, etc.? And I was really just screwing around, as you'll see in the process video. And the digital tools, Procreate in this case for me, have been so important because they allow you to hit undo. Two taps, or I should say one tap with two fingers on the screen, three fingers redo, four, lose the menus so you can see the whole canvas, three, and wipe, you can erase an entire layer if you've been experimenting on a layer. And that has been incredibly freeing because part of the reason I have taken art classes and then ditched them a week or two later is that I'd work on a piece for say an hour with traditional tools and then I would fuck it up in some way and I'd just destroy the piece. And there was just no going back, really using the media I was using. And I found it incredibly demoralizing. And so what you will notice in Procreate, and I really sincerely believe, actually I know for a fact in my experience so far, they are highly synergistic. So working in the digital will help, at least it has helped me in the physical. I'm working in the physical, especially for me with time constraints. So one, two, or up to five minute gesture drawings with live models who are changing position, whether you want them to or not, as soon as the time is up, find all of this to work beautifully together. In the digital side, you'll notice in these process videos how many times I screw up or try something, I should just say experiment, don't like it, and then revert. Okay, so Bacchus is number one. Groovy is next, that's my nickname for this hippie guy, where I'm much more comfortable with the tools and I'm starting to play with more esoteric or, or bizarre brushes, like the one that I used for the hair, which is really intended for leaves as best as I can tell. And uh, that felt very good to play with. And then you have uh, a number of others. Purple Moonrise is the first tutorial I completed with the YouTube channel Art With Flow. And I'm glad I started with this one. It is a beautiful way to start, and it is something that you might look at and, and think to yourself, I cannot possibly make this. And then lo and behold, you can. Uh, and it, it also is a great introduction to thinking in layers. And I do think working with Procreate will help me a lot, incredibly so, as someone who's only worked with black and white, right? Let's really call it black uh, or graphite, like graphite and ink. That's it for me. So I've never really thought in layers in the way that a painter would, right? So David Hockney or somebody else would also be thinking oftentimes in layers. So I think that after working in Procreate for a while, going to physical medium, 
playing with watercolors, playing with acrylic will be much, much, much easier because I will have trained my process, my thinking and my visual assessment, right? Looking at things and uh, dissecting them into layers. Okay. So purple moonrise was a great place to start. I went from there to melting moon because it was similar and I thought I would be able to reinforce certain habits. And then from there, I went to home on the range which is kind of a beautiful Tuscan type look to it. I improvised a little bit on the house. I added a chimney and some smoke because I wanted to prove to myself that I could improvise even within a tutorial. That one took quite a bit longer than the other two. By this point, with three tutorials, I've begun to reinforce a number of fundamental tools and specific brushes that I end up using and use most of the time now when I'm playing around with it. So let's jump to a few others. Shadow Dragon was a piece that I ended up being very happy with. And it's instructive, I think, because it shows you something that I never would have done in analog. I spent a ton of time creating this dragon's face and head, and then I just scrapped the whole thing when I realized that the shadow effect was really cool and much more compelling in a way, especially since I don't understand how to shade, let's call it realistically, even though it's a dragon head, right? To make it just gritty and looking less like a drag and drop single color into a box or a shape of some type. So that ended up being an amazing learning experience for me. And uh, you can always reclaim the face that you worked on in this case, right? So I copied that entire layer and pasted it into a new canvas, which uh, you guys probably aren't going to see the name, but I called it dicking around because it's just sketching, playing with different things, experimenting with shading in purples and reducing the opacity and getting to use a brush called syrup, which I like quite a bit for coloring. And I got all of this from a YouTuber. So I will give him credit where credit is due. I'll put it in the description because I can't recall his name offhand, but an artist and animator who really does a great job in his shorts, especially of explaining very sort of high leverage, I don't want to say shortcuts, but tips that I found really helpful, again, for reducing the number of tools you use or the number of things you consider to apply positive constraints. And one of the other things that really kickstarted my re-exploration of art was reading a book called Eliza, E-L-E-E-Z-A, by Eliza, E-L-I-Z-A, Eva Nova, who has an amazing account on Instagram at Eliza. In any case, it walks you through how she has created different pieces, both with analog tools and with Procreate. And she constrains her toolkit to basically a mechanical pencil with 0.7 millimeter graphite. I think it's 6B. I might be getting that off. A hard eraser, a soft eraser, a blending stick. And that's basically it. That is what I've been using. She has a few other things, but I've just been carrying those few things with me with a tiny sketchbook. And if I'm having coffee or just waiting for a meal or whatever, I'll just try to draw something quickly that's in front of me. And that's been hugely freeing to not feel like I need to choose the right tools from amongst 20 different things. All right, coming back to this, uh, you will see then a couple of others. Iris did not turn out as well as I would have hoped. And there's a lot more room for error or room for improvement in this piece compared to Flo's earlier tutorials that I did. And for that reason, I think I screwed up a few things. The reflection in the eye was a little too opaque. I went back later and I reduced the opacity by kind of brushing on that layer. Uh, might've been using a mask, I'm not sure. These are all things that I learned through watching these tutorials. But the iris didn't turn out as well as I would have liked. Then you have Still Life Cat. Still Life Cat was my first Still Life. <laughs> and I generally just, I, I don't like Still Life that takes a long time. I find it kind of boring, I'll be honest. Uh, I need to get over that. But for right now, the key is momentum and momentum, enthusiasm, enthusiasm. It doesn't matter what the hell I draw. If it's aliens, if it's camels with huge titties, whatever, right? I should just do whatever is necessary to keep practicing. So right now I'm not subjecting myself to drawing a lot of stuff that I find intensely boring. Uh, this was a cat I happened to like a lot. It was sitting next to me on a piece of furniture and I used a lot of the tools from earlier tutorials like the spackle and a handful of other texture brushes uh, on the upholstery and so on of the chair this cat was sitting on. 
So I was happy with that as a first attempt, and it was a very accurate depiction of this cat. Could be hugely improved, but got to start somewhere. And then uh, the last one I'll talk about is the battle expansion attempt. All right, so this one's instructive because I was very happy with the figure, but when I first created a skin tone for this figure, I was like, ah, it looks kind of orange. It's a little too in the middle. Like he should either be darker skinned or lighter skinned. And I was like, all right, let me experiment with both. And the way I did that though, on the lighter side, is I reduced the opacity of the color. Cause I, that's my first time working with colors. I don't know what I'm doing. So I reduced the opacity on that layer. And I was like, oh, perfect, looks great. And then I used the eyedropper to sample that color and I filled in the neck area and ears and all of that with that color, the new color. All right, so far so good. Then I do the gun and this and that and all that was done manually. And then I want to put a background in and make it this kind of Gotham night fight scene with lights and reflections and I was very ambitious. But as soon as I put in backgrounds, uh-oh, it's showing through the character, right? So I tried to put red in the back. I wanted to make sort of a red brick building right behind him. Didn't work. The red was showing through. So I didn't know how to fix this. One possible fix would be to replicate that layer several times so that they're kind of like transparencies on top of one another so the skin gets more opaque. The problem with that is it goes back to the old color, which I didn't like. So now I have a color problem, plus I have a color mismatch because the neck is that lighter color and the body goes back to the original darker color. So I wasn't able to figure out how to fix that. I think in retrospect, there are things I could have done by using some of the top left drop down menus for hue, saturation, et cetera, to just toggle around and find a color that I liked rather than screwing with the opacity and then suffering the consequences later because I didn't realize what I was doing. So those are a couple of notes. I'm going to keep scrapping. Um, I'm watching lots of YouTube and Instagram. It is challenging to piece together a logical sequence if you're exploring and picking and choosing what you like from different people. So I may end up just sticking with one or two or three folks. There are lots of artists I like. We'll get to that another time. But I may just try to find folks who have similar styles, who have captured process videos, who, or who have some type of teaching methodology. The trick for me is I want to draw stuff that I'm personally interested in. And I'm willing to suffer a little bit on stuff that I find monotonous. Uh, certainly, I've studied enough languages and so on to know that it's not all curse words and fun stuff. But it's fragile, right? Art is kind of an, it's an elective optional thing for me. And I know I have attempted to start and quit so many times in the past. This is the most momentum I've had in a while. So the whole goal is just do whatever is necessary to keep drawing. <laughs> That's it. You know, if that means you're just doing like copying, tracing Ren and Stimpy drawings for six months, fine. That's okay. I don't anticipate that's what I'm going to do as much as I love Ren and Stimpy, but there you have it, folks. So I hope some of this is helpful, and if people get something out of this, I will do more on the process side. All right? Thanks.